Republican California Congressman Dana Rohrabacher has been staunchly defending the Russian government against accusations that they meddled in our election. In fact, he believes the entire Trump-Russia story is a farce. So what makes him so sure? Also, who the hell is Dana Rohrabacher? It's time for the check-in. Now, you may have heard the news that Congressman Rohrabacher recently met with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, and then he reportedly tried to negotiate a deal with the White House to pardon Assange in exchange for WikiLeaks handing over alleged evidence that would show that Russia was not behind the hacked DNC emails. So why is Rohrabacher taking this controversial stance? Well, he's been in Congress since the late 1980s and has developed a reputation for being the most Russia-friendly lawmaker, earning him the nickname Putin's favorite congressman. Although I can't think of anything more haunting than Vladimir Putin saying, you are my favorite. <laughs> Rohrabacher's fascination with Russia began early on in a very strange way. In the late 1980s, he briefly went to Afghanistan to spend time with local militants, the Mujahideen, and their fight against the Soviets. Yes, that is actually him right there. Rohrabacher has said it was there he realized his fight was against communism, not the Russians who he came to admire. According to reports at the time, Rohrabacher also got to know Russian officials, including a then little-known deputy mayor of St. Petersburg by the name of Vladimir Putin. Rohrabacher claims to have lost a drunken arm wrestling match to Putin in the early 90s at a bar in downtown Washington after a game of touch football. That sounds like the beginning of a weekend that ends with, let's never speak of this again. <laughs> Rohrabacher was apparently so Russia-friendly that in 2012, according to reports, FBI agents sat him down in the Capitol and warn him that a Russian spy was trying to recruit him as an agent of influence. And if you're a Russian spy, Rohrabacher does seem to be the perfect person to recruit. He's a senior member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs who consistently defends Russia in Congress. And of course, he's convinced that the Russia-Trump story is all a fabrication. But before we take his word for it, let's look at what he believes about other things like science. You know, half the world, I don't know if you know this, half the world, um, when they look at the moon, they see a man on the moon. But the other half of the world sees what? A rabbit in the moon. Again, I think the moon is close by, and whatever we can actually get a, a benefit out of going back there, we should. We don't know what those other cycles were caused by in the past. Could be dinosaur flagellants, you know, or who knows. And what happened when the CO2 was greater since then and now? There's been many cycles of up and down warming. So with that said, I think that we have, uh, we've had a great discussion today. You've had a great discussion. <laughs> you just basically suggested global warming was caused by dinosaur farts. <laughs> now that clip was from 2007, and Rohrabacher later said that he was joking when he made that comment, but it doesn't look like he's changed his mind since then in terms of his skepticism about whether carbon dioxide is bad for human health, which earned him this response from a Democratic congressman. Regarding my friend from California and what he just said, uh, if he thinks that carbon dioxide doesn't cause any human health problems, I invite him to put a plastic bag over his head, uh, tie it tightly around his neck, and see what happens next. Now, now a part of me thinks Rohrabacher may have already tried that. Because it would help to explain this impromptu jam session he engaged reporters in during a tour of his office back in 2011. Over the years, I've uh, uh, written uh, a lot of songs that are sort of, sort of political songs, you know, the sort of patriotic things and things like that. God bless America, God bless our freedom, and God bless the people who work every day. God bless us all. God bless America, the freest land of all. There you go. Would you believe he's only had negative 30 lessons? <laughs> Look for that song on Rohrabacher's album, Bumper Stickers I Saw at Costco. <laughs> Seriously. What? Is this guy smoking? Well, funny I should ask. Now, don't tell anybody I broke the law. <laughs> Actually, you know, bust, they'll bust down my door. And, you know, and, uh, and, and, and take whatever's inside and use it for evidence against me. There's definitely cannabis in there, and uh, it makes sure that I can sleep now. 
So much for the theory that weed helps you write great music. Now, Rohrabacher was speaking to a group of marijuana advocates there, explaining that he had turned to medical marijuana to help with his arthritis pain. And although it's legal in the state he represents, his outright admission was significant because, according to one close observer, it marks the first time in at least several decades that a sitting U.S. congressman has admitted to marijuana use while in office. So he's a weed-loving, pro-Russia guitar player. He's basically the guy who ruined every party I went to in college. <laughs> But Rohrabacher seems to be blazing his own trail when it comes to more than just marijuana, specifically when it comes to his dealings with Russian officials and lobbyists. In fact, his story keeps overlapping with many of the key players in the current Russia investigation. As the LA Times reported, when former campaign manager and current target of the Mueller investigation, Paul Manafort, was working on behalf of a pro-Russian Ukrainian political party in 2013, he met with just one U.S. politician, Rohrabacher, in what Rohrabacher described as a nice little dinner. Somehow, nice little dinner with Paul Manafort seems like mafia slang. <laughs> Take him out for a nice little dinner somewhere by the river. <laughs> and Manafort is certainly not the only connection here. According to other reports, in April of last year, Rohrabacher traveled to Moscow and met with the same Russian lawyer and lobbyist who we now know were at Donald Trump Jr.'s infamous meeting with Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort at Trump Tower last summer. Between that meeting, Manafort and his defense of Assange, even some members of Rohrabacher's own party are wondering who he's really working for. Behind closed doors, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy joked, quote, there's two people I think Putin pays, Rohrbacker and Trump. Um, when the comment came to light, McCarthy dismissed it as a joke. And of course it's a joke. There have to be at least 12 more people on Putin's payroll. <laughs> Jokes aside, the congressman should probably rely on U.S. intelligence agencies to do their job without his interference, because we all want America to remain, what's the phrase I'm looking for? The freest land of all. This has been The Check-In.